Good evening, and welcome to this presentation of the Premier Ultimate League. We are live from Pit Fitzpatrick Stadium in Portland, Maine, for this matchup between Portland Rising and Nashville Nightshade. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ross Ketchke, joined on tonight's broadcast by Andy Schachter. And Rising has been rolling so far through this season. Andy, what are you looking for in this home game from them? They've had a great start to the season so far. Their offense has really started clicking over the past couple games, and they're going to look to take this win at home in their last home game. And we checked in just before the game with the coach of coaching staff with Nashville Nightshade. Some of their focus is heading into this game as well. What's top of mind for them? They're really looking to force Rising out, maybe make some tough deep looks off of uh, in the slightly wet conditions, and just play good lockdown defense and try and get some turns and act fast off a turn and try and see if they can score quickly in transition. All right, and as we mentioned, Rising's been rolling so far through this season here back at home for their home stadium, Fitzpatrick Stadium in Portland, Maine. Rising wearing the dark jerseys tonight, visiting Nashville in their whites. Teams in the huddles right now getting ready to get this match of the Premier Ultimate League underway. And we're going to take a quick look at the rules here for the Premier Ultimate League for you Ultimate fans out there. More or less the same game, but a few key differences to keep an eye on. 10-second stalls by Mark, still the same. The field size, pretty familiar as well. Self-officiated with those observers coming in for some of those closer calls. Players have 10 seconds to resolve those calls to keep that game moving quickly. And of course, integrity overruled by players or coach. And here's where some of the differences come in. We're playing in four quarters here. Maybe not your typical goal to get to a certain point mark or leader by the end of a certain period of time. Those are 12-minute quarters, 150 seconds in between. So those quick turnarounds as well, a quick 10-minute half in between. Two timeouts per half and substitutions are allowed on these points as well. And an important point with those quarters as well, the clock has a pretty interesting function here for the first three quarters of the game. Whoever has possession gets to continue playing forward until there's either a turn or some kind of violation that would then turn the disc over. It's the fourth quarter that we get the opportunity for an exciting buzzer beater, depending on the state of that game so far. So a very familiar game of Ultimate for those of you who have loved it for a long time, but some unique twists that the Premier Ultimate League has put on it to make it a very exciting way to watch the game. You can see Rising there going through their tunnel, sending their line out to start the game. Starting on D, looks like Rising will be sending their D line out. D line's been the bread and butter so far for Portland Rising through their first three games. Playing in the rain tonight. You can see that coming down on the camera as well as we take a look at both sidelines. A pretty good clip here. It's been on and off throughout Portland all day. Also a humid day. Luckily, not a ton of wind blowing at the moment, so definitely a slippery disc out there, but not too much wind to contend with for these throwers. Some thunderstorms in the area, so hopefully we can miss those and keep this game uh, unbroken. And of course, we're here in New England. The old adage, if you don't like the weather here, just wait a minute. It's bound to change. <laughs> Extremely true being on the coast as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right here. We're probably only about a mile away from the Atlantic Ocean right now. Maybe even closer. We'll see if that rain impacts both teams' ability to effectively move the disc up and down the field. Right now, Nashville will be back to pull again. They are in their away whites right now. Portland Rising back to pull in their home darks. Yep. And here comes the pull from Chloe Rouse. First pull of the game. Let's ride. All right, Nashville picks up quick center. Right now, players... Spread out a nice layout grab to keep things going there on the first point. An exciting play just to get this one going. Sliding to the knees to keep the disc alive as well. Looking to work things back to the middle here. And that's, and that's just one of the explosive plays we can expect to see from Schaffner tonight. Known for that in the ultimate circles. So far, Nightshade not having too much trouble getting some of those easier ends. Portland doing a good job, though, taking away... That center back around, trying to force him onto the sideline here. A call on the field as the observer steps in. Play stops quickly. Looks like a pick. Players reset, and the disc is tapped back in. 
Nightshade looks for that around, gets the reset, continuation as well. Looks like Nightshade came out in a horizontal stack trying to attack the middle with their cutters. We'll see if they transition as they get closer to the end zone into a more vertical stack. And there's the first turn of the game. That one's flying just out of reach. It'll come up a few yards to where it sailed out of bounds as Rising gets an opportunity to pick up and shoot for a break on the first point of the game. And, and there's, they do. Yeah, there's the shot all the way downfield, chasing, and the layout, but just out of reach. Nightshade picks up, already going back the other way. A D turn right back again, and another turn. Turnover, turnover, turnover. Looks like these players are maybe a little too amped up coming out in the first point of the game. Saw Rising take that one big shot towards the end zone just out of reach. A couple of quick turns and reset again. A big D from Chloe Rouse. She streaks back towards the end zone. A center for Rising. We'll see if they opt for a bit more patience here than the last time they had the disc in hand. And again, you can see the rain coming down on the field. Steady hands for sure to prevent some what would be Normally pretty easy grabs. That disc is going to be pretty slippery coming off here. Again, luckily not too much win for the throwers to have to contend with. Surprisingly few players on the field wearing gloves, which is often an aid that players will have in wet conditions. A nice big around throw there to open things up for Rising. A throw to the break side and the score. Portland goes up 1-0 on the break. That's Alex Odie on the score to take things up 1-0 here with about 9 minutes and 25 seconds left here in the first quarter of play. That was a really good, well-timed cut as the disc moved laterally for Odie to get into that space in the end zone so they weren't there too early and they're not giving time for the defender to catch up. Let's take a look at it here on the replay. A really great around throw to just open up the whole field. Coaches and players watching know it's the easiest way to score in the end zone. Swing the disc around to the break side. You get a lot of space to play with for your cutters there in the end zone. Give a shout out to our team working here tonight on the broadcast, giving us the great graphics and replays along the way. While it looks like there's a pretty similar line from Nashville coming back out for the next offensive point, the Rising t seems to have seven totally new players out on the field. Full shift change for Rising. And now we're starting to see some of those gloves come out. All right, Colette Pellegrini back to pull. It's in the air as the second point of the game gets underway. Portland going up on their first break of the game. Looking to recreate some of that success. Nightshade working towards the middle and another quick turn for Nightshade. That's a great block in the lane from Sophie Shen who peeled off her player and clogged that lane and was able to make the block. A reset towards the middle now. That one floating into the hands on the far side. Rising not able to get much open downfield at the moment. A look to the strike to reset. Gets there. And a shot towards the end zone. And the score for Colette Pellegrini. That one's coming from number 11, Josie Gillette. Her first assist of the game. And that was a great reset cut from Josie to get up line. Uh, kind of body out her defender and make a nice continuation throw to Pellegrini. Two points, two breaks for Portland Rising right now as they jump out, and really defense has been the bread and butter for this team all year long. They're showing exactly why right now, able to turn those Ds and mistakes from the offense into some pretty easy points going down the other way. And it looks like there's a conversation on the field with m perhaps the line's coming. Oh, it's a timeout on the field. First timeout we've seen of the game so far. I wonder if one of Rising's coaches called a timeout before the with the disc trapped on the sideline. See if they can get their offensive line into punch in the break. And again, subs on those timeouts permitted here in the PUL. and it looks like a full line change from Rising. 
Another fresh seven for Rising. We'll wipe that score off the board, it looks like. Another chance to punch it home to take this break point. Slightly unfortunate timing from Rising, but we'll see if their offense can re-punch in the score. Looking for the reset behind now, finds it. Back to the middle and a quick turn for Rising. And there's Schaffner taking off, right like Coach Modicus mentioned, looking to attack quickly out of transition. Rising has been able to force a few quick turns. Let's see how Nashville is able to take care of the disc here as we, as we do wipe that last score off the board for Rising, now leading 1-0 here in the second point of the game. Some back and forth action. Now a shot to the in cut for Nightshade. Nashville not taking any deep shots yet. So far pretty content to live on those in cuts. Yeah, it looks like the handling core of Gilbert and Robinson seem to be pretty content moving the disc between yourselves. And a great grab there to keep that alive. Number two, Megan Creamer. That one sails just off the fingertips of the open cutter in the end zone. That'll go back down the other way for Rising. Yeah, that was a great catch from Schaffner in traffic, but maybe got a little overzealous on that blade across the stack, especially catches over over the head in this these wet conditions. Could be tough. A little extra zip on that. And if you take a look at the top side of your screen, you see some of the Rising fans out here. It is full rain jacket, boots, and umbrella kind of rain out here, folks. Not necessarily easy ultimate weather, but it can sure be fun if you got the right attitude. And there's maybe that rain coming into play right there, the disc just slipping off the hands. All right, Rising will try to force now towards the sideline. And another quick turn. The disc just bouncing off the hands right now. you got to wonder how much the weather is starting to really have its impact on this game early. It seems like the rain has definitely picked up even within the last point. We, so can, we can hear it on the roof of the broadcast booth here. Yeah. And another one. And another quick turn. You wonder how that affects the strategies for either team as well. Changes the kind of looks that they're trying to generate on offense to maybe make that disc a bit more secure coming into the hands. A shot down field here. It's going to be 50-50 and sails just out of reach of the streaking Nashville cutter. Points like this early on in the game definitely favor rising. Nightshade seems to have brought a slightly smaller roster to this away game. And so exchanging multiple turns over the course of a point only in the first quarter might be really tough later on with legs. And because of those substitutions, especially happening with those timeouts, we've already seen uh, three fresh sets of seven on the field for Rising so far, only in the second point of the game. That numbers advantage may be coming into play earlier than usual in this game. Looking for the reset now, gets back to the middle. To the sideline now, some nice handler action from Rising, trying to generate some space downfield. And here comes the shot, streaking wide open, just a few yards out in front of the end zone, floats it up and in. Number 16, Aaron Ray pulling that one home. And that's a great cut from Knowles in a space. Definitely an initiator, initiating cutter for this rising team, and we'll be expected to see a bunch of those over the course of this game. And here's another look at that deep shot downfield. Running deep, and then just a nice, easy flip up to Aaron Ray for the score. And a great throw to space from Henkin, especially in these conditions. A fresh and hopefully somewhat drier seven coming onto the field now for Rising. Saw players shedding the rain jackets on the side. All right, two points, two breaks for Rising so far. The decision to switch in that O-line eventually paying off. Maybe a little bit later than the coaching staff for Rising would have hoped for, yeah. but you, you did get that fantastic offense there at the end of that point, just a, a few turns later. Not quite how they drew it up, but effective nonetheless. Probably also a good confidence boost for the rising O-line to know that they can get the disc back when they do turn it over. Nice to see that early in the game as well, making some of those adjustments, not letting mistakes trip them up at all. All right, rising back to pull now, going left and to right across your screen. Here comes the pull. Great float on that from Pellegrini. Let's see if they can 
the defense can get set before the first initiating throw. Nashville living with a lot of those in cuts still. They did take one deep shot downfield last play, and there's the bobble off the fingertip. The rain has let up just a little bit, but it is still coming down. you got to imagine the field's probably pretty wet. Disc's still pretty wet. As Rising floats it up towards the middle, and it's pulled down in traffic. Patience here about 15 yards out from the end zone as Rising looks to punch home a third straight break to start this game. That one's sailing just out of reach. It'll go back to Nashville going the other way. And you could see the disc was straight out of Pellegrini's hands, fading away from her receiver, which makes it even harder to run onto. Nashville able to get out of Callahan County back there by their own goal line, trying to get some offense going so far. Great handler defense to take away that first reset, which leads to a turn. And some pressure there on the cutter to force that hard in. Ball was off the hands, and a nice, easy around flick to get in for the score. It's a great goal from Westgate in transition from Baranis. Three points, three breaks so far for Portland Rising in, here in the first quarter. And their defensive line offense looks almost clinical at this point. They've gotten a lot of looks at it for sure. I mean, all, all three games, defense has really been the name of the game for Portland Rising. They've forced a lot of turns and a lot of consecutive breaks, especially in first half so far. We've seen that dominance kind of come out hard and fast. And getting, given that they're getting a fair number of short field turns in the uh, nightshade half of the field, you would think they would sometimes be a little nervous trying to attack in a short field, but have been able to keep space for each other and really punch it in. You can see Chloe Rouse right now trying to protect the disc from the rain best she can underneath the jersey. Lots of love for Rising on the sideline right now. All right, Rose is back. Rouse is back to pull now. Here it comes, right to left across your screen. Some nice float on that one. As Rising sprints down to try go for their fourth straight break to start this game here in the first quarter. That one sails out of bounds. About 10 yards, 20 yards past midfield. Just about four and a half minutes left to play here in the first quarter of action. So if you're Nightshade so far, you know, three breaks straight in a row. Your offense is having a bit of a tough time. The weather is likely a factor on how things have been going so far. What's your strategy to not let this get away from you, to keep this within striking distance as we see the shot downfield and maybe with the best scoring opportunity we've seen so far here from Nightshade as they look for the nice round. Like, hey, there it is. We yeah. talked about how to get some offense going. There it is. A wide open hook to a three throw score seems like a great recipe for uh, calming some nerves for the away team. See if they can settle down and get their defensive line on the field and see if they can start generation breaks of their own. Going to be our first look at the D-line for Nashville as we take a look at that replay. A nice flick find into the end zone. And that's Schaffner's game. Uh, I think you'll see her almost every offensive point or every, that she's on making the initiating cut from the middle. Tori Taylor bringing that one home into the end zone. As we'll get another look at one of the O-lines for Portland Rising. I think Rising runs a little bit of a tighter O-line that while we might see two fully uh, independent defensive lines from Rising, they probably only have about 10 players on the offensive line that they rotate, which really helps cohesion and uh, consistency. Can look for Sophie Knowles who to make an initiating cut probably from a side stack if I had to guess. And that one sails down about 15 yards past midfield, centered right away as we take a look at this offensive line for rising floats up to the around side for the reset. Portland looking for some of those in cuts, not much developing downfield. A shot and a fantastic grab in traffic up into the air, but a quick turn right away for rising is a get a break chance for Nashville. It looks like Nashville might have taken a timeout to get their offensive line on to try and punch in one of those breaks. We talked about Rising going up to a 3-0 lead with three breaks in a row, but 
an opportunity for an offensive point and then a break right away, Nashville could be one throw away from getting themselves right back in striking distance for this game. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Rising's offense or whichever players get substituted on are able to buckle down and prevent that. Looks like lots of members of this offensive line are staying on the field. This is a shot really illustrating how heavy that rain is coming down here in Portland, Maine this evening. It's the first quarter of action, about two minutes and 50 seconds left to play. Offense is set, defense will now take their places as well as we wait for the disc to get tapped back in. It's the lifelong debate whether or not you'd rather, for ultimate players, whether or not you'd play, rather play in the wet or the wind. Is there a third option? Yeah, neither, but I think <laughs> everyone would choose that one. How about some for, snow? Yeah. Us in New England do play in we snow. We definitely get some snow ultimate up here as Nashville takes a shot downfield. That'll be well out of reach of everybody, though, rising an opportunity to pick up and try to march it down the full length of the field. In stadium game clock right now, reading about three minutes and five seconds left here to play in the first quarter of action. Right now, Rising working to get it out of their own end zone. Dangerous territory back here. Great and cut by Ray to open up space and get out of their own end zone. And another good in cut. That one nearly tipped by the Nashville defender. Really right. good catch in traffic from Hecht. And another. <laughs> Opportunity here for Rising to go on a run. Maybe a one-on-one -on -one look downfield, a reset right now. And that one bobbled off the hands as well. We've seen both teams really struggling to keep a firm hand on the disc so far with the rain coming down so hard. Also, lots of pressure from the defense. Sometimes the easier ones are a lot harder, even when you're in that wide-open space. If you've got a defender bearing down on you all game, it's always in your head. And now a big backhand shot downfield also sailing pretty far out of the way. We've seen a few of those get away from Nashville so far. Opportunities to take a shot deep that have just ended up 10, 15 yards too far. While that shot might have not have connected, it does pin rising back in their own third of the field. So makes them work the full 80 yards. Not a bad ultimate punt. Great break from Devlin. And there's a shot of their own. That one's going to sail, oh, just out of reach on that sideline. Tough to tell exactly how close to the line it was. Rising still down. That's Hampton, number 19. Turf, while wet, is not always the most forgiving to lay out on. Great effort going full extension for that. Just off the fingertips, slightly out of reach. Looks like Xiao is being subbed in. All right, tap of the ground, action back on now. Number 33, Yuka Xiao coming in. The substitution on this line. And a quick turn already from Nightshade, rising right now about 20 yards out from the end zone, an opportunity to try to punch it in just off the doorstep. Nice shot to the middle now, up and over the top. That's an offensive point for Rising. That's a... Knowles, number 55, went to the offhand backhand there, maybe feeling there's a little extra float and a bit, slightly better grip being able to throw a backhand instead of a forehand with their right hand. Kate Powers bringing that one home, rocking the gloves in the end zone, nice and steady. No, no chances taken right now. Seemed a little indecisive about the celebration, though. <laughs> We're still working on that. It's only the first quarter. Exactly. Only opportunity for the celebrations to go up. Plenty of time to round into form. Another look at the D-line for Rising. Portland responding to that first offensive point from Nashville. Putting up one of their own. Extending their lead back to where it was. Right now 4-1. to one. In stadium game clock right now gives us about a minute and six seconds left. And remember that with the quarter action for the Premier Ultimate League for the first three quarters, including the one we're in right now. If that clock expires, whatever team has possession plays until there is a turn. So some opportunity here to maybe close this one out on a score and 
potentially play out the clock depending on exactly how long this point goes if you're Nashville. It's definitely something interesting to keep an eye on as a lot of players coming from the USA Ultimate rule set, which are used to untimed games, might not be as intentional about trying to take advantage of that. A quick turn again for Nightshade. This D-line for Rising will pick it up and look to go the other way. There, you, you mentioned how their D-line offense was looking just absolutely clinical, like a machine finding the end zone. There it goes again. That's a great huck from Shen to Pellegrini, who, while Nightshade seems to want to be forcing the rising cutters deep, might not want to let them be that open. Another quick turn leading to more quick offense for Portland Rising here in the first quarter of action. Looks off two different shots. Finds the end zone quickly. Pellegrini wide open. No defender within 10 yards. That's pretty much as easy as it gets for an away shot. And you mentioned a few break points ago as well. The D-line's ability so far to, to pin with a short field. You know, getting those turns early, taking advantage of those turns, and not having to work too far upfield to turn defense into offense. Makes it life a lot easier for those D-lines, especially with how much work they've been getting so far early in this game. And it's great to put them in a mental space for the rest of the game if they know that they can do this and continue see if they help them continue doing that throughout the rest of the game as well. Another look for the D-line for Portland Rising. Back to pull. Basically the same seven on, it looks like. Quick point on the last one. In-game clock, 37 seconds left here in this first quarter. Nashville looking for something to develop upfield. Looks like a little poachy look from the rising handlers to try and cut off the throwing lanes right in front of the disc. Shot down the center, two rising defenders in space. That one broken up by Pellegrini. All right, 12 seconds left on the in-stadium clock right now. And again, Rising doesn't have to rush this like time's about to run out on the clock. Looks like there is a call to send this one back, though. Looks like Kramer is claiming that there was contact on that huck. So we'll see how this is resolved. Oh, observer. uncontested. Yep, observer coming in. Uncontested foul. So seven seconds left on the in-stadium clock for us here in Portland, Maine. No need to rush it if you are Nightshade. They can play until there's a turn once the clock expires. Maybe almost advantageous for Nightshade. Not only did that turn not count, but they're now able to have the disc with less time on the clock. And that siren signals that the next turn or score will end the point, end the, the quarter, rather. Nightshade looking for something to develop on the open side. Finds the in cut. Ooh, and there's the turn. Drop. That a drop will end the quarter right now. Portland rising defense turning into offense. Rolling so far. Right now they lead 5-1 to one over Nashville. The pace of play is great from rising's offense when they have the disc. They really seem to be making great spaces for each other and not getting uh, stagnant too much, which is going to be helpful as we've mentioned a million times already in these wet conditions. And remember, you can donate to the Premier Ultimate League and all the work it's doing to promote the game of Ultimate around the country in sports broadcasts like these as well. That link now at the bottom of your screen, also available in the uh, live stream that you're watching right now. So far, the one point that... Uh, Nashville's been able to muster, came from that okay, deep shot, quick downfield. If you're looking to get some more efficient offense going so far, maybe settle things down, what are you seeing in the huddle right now if you are Nightshade? I think just looking to take a deep breath and just calm down and take it one throw at a time. Uh, given that the catching in these conditions might be a little tougher, even the easiest 15-yard pass that people really have to focus extra on, for some, even though it's something that everyone may have done a million times. So just taking a deep breath, trusting each other, uh, and just getting into flow seems like a good strategy going forward and hopefully continue gaining some confidence offensively.
not being shown on screen, but you can see the O'Connell sisters and Adele Pitsis leading the stands in a choreographed dance that you can find on Rising's Instagram account. It's great and better than anything I could even come up with. I will say Rising social media presence really p punch it above the weight. It's one of my favorite follows. Certainly. And you wonder if any more players are going to be donning the gloves for this half. We, you, you got to think that the rain has been impacting a lot of those turns so far. And just that little extra layer of protection might be advantageous for both teams. I wish I'd been keeping track of who was wearing gloves at the beginning of the game to see if anyone had just put them on. We're going to have to talk to our stat keeping department. That's a new one. We're going to have to start checking in with every game. Yeah. Throws per augmented hands. That's, that is an advanced analytic if I have ever heard one. It's an advanced uh, move to be wearing gloves in the first place. I remember when gloves were totally a faux pas in Ultimate, and everyone would, uh, if you were caught wearing them despite their practicality, uh, maybe be teased a little bit. I think and now you see them prevalent. They've been embraced a little more. Certainly. I, uh, my, my foray into gloves ended with a pretty bad glove tan after a summer of Club Ultimate, so I decided, nah, probably no more for me. And I think that's a risk you have to be willing to undertake for... Uh, <laughs> The help in the hot and humid. It's for the love of the game. Certainly. All right, we're getting second quarter of action underway here. Right now, Rising leading 5-1 to one over Nashville Nightshade. Portland starting this one on offense. A look to the middle here. Looking for something to develop downfield right now. Not much. Looks for the reset. Finds it. And at the bottom of your screen, it's good to see Hampton back on the field after taking a stub on that layup. Rising able to work a little bit of handler action here as we see a floating shot down and a D from Nightshade as they get the opportunity to go for a break here in the first point of the second quarter. And I wonder if that was blocked a little bit by the mark. I think that was Creamer who was marking Huang. Oh, but a miscommunication on a reset gives the disc right back to Rising. Another quick turn here for Nashville. Rising picks up back on offense and a hand block right away Disc rolling picked up. A shot deep right away off the turn. Some space to pull it in, but it falls just about three yards out of the cutting number 10, Tory Taylor. Active marks from uh, Nightshade have led to a couple turnovers on this point. I wonder if that's been a point of emphasis for the coaching staff to let their players be a little more aggressive. Rising picks up about 75 yards to march to get down to the end zone. A nice swing to open some space up here. Right now, no mark on the disc. Plenty of time. Nightshade was playing that open side on the top of the screen, and a great break from Hankin was able to find Hampton on the break side where there was no defender. And the sliding catch, but bobbles out on the landing. A turn for rising again. That was Knowles who tried to dig that one out of the ground and uh, just wasn't able to come up with it. A shot towards the end zone now for Nightshade. That one falls just out of look of our camera, and the observers are calling it in. That's a goal. Looks like a catch from Rubino. I wonder if wasn't able to see that on the screen, but looks like an exciting toe-of-the-line layout. Much like us, our cameras are also hiding from the rain today. Who could blame them? But a fantastic opportunity there. Nashville taking advantage of that first break of the game for them. Second point of the game. Right now, Rising leads 5-2 to two over Nightshade. A terrific play there up the sideline. And that's a break right off the bat from Nightshade, which, given their inability to punch one in in the first quarter, might set the tempo for this the rest of this first half and going forward. And that, again, is playing into, seems like, Nightshade's offensive strategy of while a pretty aggressive downfield looking for those deep shots. Uh, taking a look at this D-line option for Nightshade now. It looks like Rodriguez is on the here. 
A little, looks like it might have slipped out of their hand, but a nice skip gets it past half field. Hope they called bounce. Look to the sideline here for Rising. Couple of around throws move things up past the middle of the field now. Looking for something to develop further down, some nice handler action. Rising continue to, to do a, continues to do a great job moving the disc laterally and opening up space where defenders for Nightshade might not be. It also makes them work even harder downfield on, defensively. There is a call on the field. Judging by how close together everyone is downfield, likely, likely a pick. A, likely a pick, reset, disc tapped back in. A few fakes to you're looking for the reset. A shot to the end zone floating up and to the right and pulled in for the score of Rising. And that's Hampton, number 19, was able to make a good side cut and free up some space downfield. Rising now leading 6-2 to two here with about 8 minutes and 45 seconds left in the second quarter. It's a nice floaty shot from Xiao as well, able to put the right shape on it. That'll float right down into Hampton's hands. Don't want to make catches any harder than they need to be right now. Xiao moving to the defenders around with a couple of hard fakes as well. The look back to reset and suddenly there's space open downfield and takes advantage of it right away. See if Rising's defense is able to get that break back right away. And simultaneously, if Nightshade is able to continue the offensive flow they found in the past few points. All right. Here comes the pull from Chloe Rouse. D point opportunity for Rising. Nashville looking to get their offense back into a groove after scoring quickly here in the opening minutes of the second quarter. As we've seen all game, that's Gilbert catching the centering pass to Schaffner immediately, who may be a little overzealous of a throw that seems to work out here. A shot to the break side here for Nashville. Like up, now about 10 yards out from their own end zone, a flick to the open side, now just on their own doorstep, looking to punch it home. And that was a great break from Castro, who was able to get the disc to the high side and then move it immediately back over to the end zone to really switch the field continuously. And a great cut in traffic from Kramer as well to find some open space. That field gets real small once the handlers are so close to the end zone. The ability to create that space with not much room takes a pretty hard cut. Despite what running 40 yards may tell your body, it's... Uh, <laughs> When you have the disc in your hands about two yards away from the end zone, it has never felt any smaller, more compact. Another break for rising here. In stadium clock tells us there's about eight minutes and ten seconds left here in the Second quarter of play in this presentation of the Premier Ultimate League. Right now, Nightshade is back to pull. This has been a nice comeback quarter for Nightshade. It definitely looked like they kind of got outworked in the first quarter, and they've done well to keep it close here and even get a break back. Worked it back into three right now. And that one slipping out of the hands, touching the defender as well. Leo getting there hand or body in the way of that huck from Fitzgerald. Rising looking to pin on the sideline right now. Doing a good job of taking that swing away. A shot up the line now. That one floating into some space and just out of reach. A turn going back the other way. Rising an opportunity to take this back on offense. And another that, hand block. Another hand block. The third of the quarter.
Might be the second for Taylor as well. Seeing the impact of that rain that it's had on the game so far. Right now it has calmed down a bit, but everything's just soaked out there. And while turf does a great job to repel the rain, uh, the conditions do tend to still be very slippery for both player and disc. And that's Yuga Zhao pulling that one home. And a nice little free throw there. NBA playoffs going on, WNBA regular season kicking off. Uh, tis the season to be watching basketball, I guess. I've been stressing out a little bit about my Boston Celtics for these uh, last few weeks. Got game seven tomorrow night, but hey, we're focusing on ultimate right now. The, the, the NBA stress is not until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, get it. It's a holiday weekend. We get a little reprieve from that, hopefully. <laughs> there you go. Some uh, celebrating lobsters out there, it looks like, as well. Crab celebrations in full effect. Another D-line opportunity here. About 6.45 left on the in-stadium clock here at Fitzpatrick Stadium in Portland, Maine. Rouse is once again back to pull for rising. And it's up and the points back underway. And a big shot immediately from Nightshade. That one's streaking down towards the end zone. Players a bit tangled up in space and no one gets there in time. It's great positioning from Odie on that deep look, able to get between their uh, the receiver that they were defending and beat them to the space so that they had no chance to make a play on the disc. Also a former teammate of Schaffner who threw that huck so in college at Oregon, so I wonder, I'm sure they're very familiar with uh, her proclivities to throw that disc. I'm sure they remember that one from practice just a little bit. Players tripped up there right next to the action. It's a tough collision. Those two matchups ran through each other. Hopefully Decker's okay. Decker back up to the feet. Will take an injury, it looks like. The rising player coming on. The surprise of the contact, sometimes even worse there than the contact itself. And a nice opportunity for uh, rising to get Knowles on the field for this offensive possession. A little bit of extra offensive firepower right now. Or not. Oh, and yes, as they come back on screen. All right, taps back in, plays live. Oh, a dangerous reset leading to that turn. Nightshade will pick up on the their own goal line, an opportunity to punch it home for another quick score, and that... Falls just out of reach. Another quick turn going back for Rising. Rising looking to get out of dangerous Callahan territory right here. Great job from Odie digging that one up. Seems to be some discussion whether or not it looks like the Nightshade player is calling that disc down. And the line judge steps in to agree. All right, another opportunity for Nightshade a few yards out from their own end zone. We haven't seen much actual end zone offense from them. Some pretty quick shots to the end zone and plays in transition, but not much organized. And that float, that one gets in there for the score. A fantastic job from Rachel Kramer tracking that one down as it sailed away. And a miscommunicated switch by the rising defenders on that upline cut freed up Schaffner to throw the disc to the uh, break side of the field. You can see Judd peeling off and Knowles not recognizing the switch. And a great job recognizing that availability for the open space right away. Puts it where only Kramer can get it. 
Right now, 7-4, to four, rising with the lead here with about 5 minutes and 9 seconds left to play in the second quarter of action. That tight offensive line back on the, on the field for rising. Looks like they kept Knowles off after subbing her on and for that last defensive, after the injury sub. And as you were telling us in the last quarter, Rising has a, a pretty wide breadth of defensive looks that they can throw up, but they do keep that O-line pretty tight. Yeah, definitely uh, keeps building cohesion and lets them get some good reps together at practices and in games. Pick called. Let's we'll see if that one goes back or stays. Right on number 19, Olivia Hampton has the disc. Looks like the defender was not quite close enough to send the disc back. So it stays with Hampton there. Rising getting some good opportunities here, working it up the field quickly. A reset back to the middle now to try to create a little bit more space. It's a good job by Xiao to get the disc moving laterally, open up some more space for Rising's offense. Rising about five yards out from the goal line now, trying to work something into the breakside cone and finds it. It's number 19, Olivia Hampton on the score. Glad to see Olivia back out there. Uh, took an injury sub after a layout a few points ago and able to make her presence felt. Both getting initiated off that, init uh, off that pole and then in the end zone here. And a good break from Huang as well. All right, Portland Rising leading 7-4 to four here in the th second quarter of action. This presentation of the Premier Ultimate League coming to you live from Portland, Maine. And dare I say, but I think I see the sun on the horizon. Some sun, some blue skies. Wow. We, considering the, the near monsoon that we were just playing in a few minutes ago. Seem to have persevered what, here. What an improvement. There's definitely a, a, a rising joke to be made in there somewhere. Yeah, I'm not that I'm, I'm, I'm not that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Please uh, tweet or DM rising on Instagram or any other social media for uh, all rising puns. I'm we, sure. we would love to see them. And here comes the pull from rising's D line. A shot now towards the end zone. It's going to be contested near the goal line and smacked down by number 25, Sophie Shen. Some nice work there catching up to the disc. Another break opportunity for Rising. And Rising definitely seems to be uh, cognizant of that early huck look from Nightshade. Shen was not supposed to be guarding Schaffner there and peeled off. An immediate turn right away from Rising. Right now, Nightshade's got it just a few yards out. The nice float over the top and pulling it home is Jesse Schaffner. It's a great catch from Schaffner. Schaffner's been in charge of a lot of that action back closer to the handler sets, making an impact right away, going a bit further downfield, even if it is right there in the end zone. A little bit of a floatier throw from Kramer but Schaffner able to come down with it despite getting close to the sideline there. And Schaffner making the quick in and out cut to create that space. Not much room to work there on the sideline when you're right on the goal line. While the throw was a little floaty, it was falling back into the end zone, so Schaffner didn't have to worry about her feet too much. Schaffner, an artist and a teacher. Fun player profile. has uh, been around the ultimate scene for a long time and at the top of the ultimate scene for a long time as well, having played on a bunch of national teams as well as been a prominent high school player before their storied career at Oregon as well. We're seeing Rising working from the sideline here. Now on another hand block and falling. Oh, are they going to call that up? That's a great catch from Hecht. 
phenomenal full layout to keep that play alive after the hand block, the fourth one we've seen of the quarter so far. Active marks from Nightshade definitely having an impact on the Portland Rising offense. And a turn there, go looking up the middle from Portland Rising. Nightshade picks up and looks to go the other way. And it looks like an immediate timeout from Nightshade's coaching staff to get their offense back on the field. Right now, three goal game. So far, Portland Rising has done a pretty good job of responding every time Nightshade's gone on some of their smaller runs. And it looks like uh, Nightshade's been doing a good job. Um, Rising's coming out with a side stack to really open up one side of the whole field. And Nightshade's been dropping defenders into the lane to uh, make those cuts in big spaces much harder and forcing Rising's uh, handlers to try and throw the disc laterally and break the mark, which has probably aided to a few of those uh, hand blocks that we've seen. And looking at a collection right now of some of the impacts of the weather that we've seen so far today. Pretty hard rain on and off right now. Thankfully off as we're talking right now, but... That disc sailing either uh, just off of the fingertips or in and out of the hands of players on both teams. The weather definitely an impact throughout the first half of play so far. Yeah, we've seen some outstanding catches, but we've also seen some drops on would-be easier throws. So far, at least a, a big part of this game coming down to who's capitalizing on those mistakes more frequently. So far, it's been rising. Looks like rising put on a subbed on a defensive line as well with the exceptions of Xiao and Huang who are stayed on from the offensive line. And a nice D there from Rouse. Nashville was looking to move things back up the middle, now rising a chance to go the other way, a break opportunity. And they have those offensive line players on the, still on the field to add some firepower to this defensive line offense, even though it would just be a hold for rising here. Great bid from Kramer, but looks like a strip called Huang had stopped rotation on the disc before it was knocked out of her hands. Just a moment too late, but a great effort on the layout. Huang looks up to the center now. Rising taking a shot towards the end zone and connects Chloe Rouse on the deep shot. And another great away backhand from Yuga, able to bend it over the whole defense and drop it right into Rouse's path. And here's another look. That's the bookends for Chloe. Able to get that D and then streaking deep, able to catch the goal as well. I once had a teammate who thought it was book ins for about five years, apparently, that they went in the book, not on either end of <laughs> the book. On either end of the book. Not could, that that was necessarily wrong. I could get behind either one, but. I could, I could see the confusion. Yeah, they were definitely disparaged, but. Uh, came recovered probably <laughs> pretty quickly it's like finding out i don't know it's like, like it's some kind of childhood memory finding out that it's not what you thought yeah exactly <laughs> all right pull here from rising as we get another defensive look from them they lead nine to five over nightshade and it looks like that's a pull from Knowles, a bit of a another offensive line player maybe a bit of a junk zone look from rising And another drop on an easy throw. Rising so far has been able to capitalize on a few of those errors. Right now about 10 yards out from the end zone, floating up a little bladey coming down and right into the hands of the streaking cutter for the score. Maybe not quite the height on that throw that Decker meant, but effective given how open Bacher and uh, Knowles were. Knowles doing a good job tracking that one down, pulling it home. Came in a little bladier than maybe expected, but that's the goal. 
gets over the defense, comes down faster, so Nightshade's defenders weren't able to recover and make a play on it. About a minute left to play here in this first quarter. Second quarter. Game's going by so fast. A minute left to play in the first half. Looks like a more traditional defensive line on for Rising now. They've mixed in a few of those offensive players for the last few looks we've seen. Certainly helped with the offensive firepower. So far, Rising, after jumping out to that lead, has been able to respond to the runs that Nightshade's thrown back at them, leading again by five. And while Kramer was able to get the disc in space there, it was not a very far vertical space. Looks like they kind of started a little too close to the disc and uh, maybe cost Nightshade some easy yards. Nightshade with some big swings around to find some more space. Now a look up to the middle. It seems to be flowing a lot better than early on in the point. Let's see if they can convert this end zone chance. And that one comes close to the turf. They'll rule it up. Great catch from Gilbert. Great job from Gilbert working to dig that one up. Schaffner now with the upline strike. And this is really Schaffner's bread and butter. You'll see them take over in the end zone all day. Red zone all day. And that's Grace Robinson there on the score with the upline look from Schaffner. You could see uh, Nightshade's handlers of Robinson and Gilbert along with Schaffner kind of running a dominator, handler, weave type set really driving, uh, cuts up line from behind the disc and uh, able to beat all of their matchups to score that goal. It's become way more prevalent and ultimate over the past couple of years as teams have uh, adjusted a small ball, not having to throw the disc as far and just being able to win one-on-one -on -one matchups in small spaces. And certainly having a player like Schaffner makes that Bread and butter for Nightshade, able to do a lot of damage right there up front. Yeah, she's pretty unguardable in those spaces. I would not want to be the person guarding her. All right, about five seconds left to play here in the, set, in the first half of action. Second quarter, Rising will be able to maintain possession of the disc even after the clock expires until they either score or turn. We'll see how they approach this end of the quarter. It looks like time expired before the pole even hit the ground, so Rising didn't even have to make that decision about whether to attack quickly or hold possession for the end of the half. Great break from Devlin to get the disc to the low side of the field. A reset now towards the middle, back to the sideline for Rising. And a shot towards the end zone, and it's there. Rising ending the half up 11-6 to six on the goal. Olivia Hampton. Olivia Hampton taking that shot towards the end zone, and the Crab celebration. All smiles head into the half for Portland Rising. For all of you taking note out there, that's how you do a Crab celebration. Is it not the lobster celebration when we're in Portland, Maine? I don't know. Maybe it's, <laughs> it's softshell crab season. It could be. It, it, it could be. <laughs> And that's a great way from Rising to end the half. Uh, really able to take advantage of big spaces. And right now, heading into halftime, down five if you're Nightshade. What are the, some of the conversations about the adjustments you can make so far? It seems like cleaning up some of the simple mistakes is a good place to start, just taking better care of the disc as they try to work downfield and giving their defense at least longer fields to work with. Yeah, I think their defense is doing a great job getting turns and especially with uh, condition, weather conditions improving going into the second half, hopefully uh, Nightshade's going to be able to continue main, getting some more offensive consistency and trusting their receivers in space so they can maybe, when they've been able to get throws going downfield and vertically down the field, they've been doing a much better job um, 
Rising's defenders have done a good job at times making the field small, feel small for Nightshade's offense. So if they can make the attacking space is big again, they should be able to continue making a run. Those active marks for Nightshade definitely uh, making an impact on the way Rising's offense has been able to function so far in this first half with those weather conditions improving as well. Maybe if not, uh, not crazy to think that we might expect a slightly tighter game coming up in the second half as well. We're about eight and a half minutes away from the start of the third quarter here in this presentation of the Premier Ultimate League. We will be back after a short break.
All right, welcome back to Fitzpatrick Stadium here for this presentation of the Premier Ultimate League. Some fantastic layouts we've seen so far today. That fantastic one there from the uh, first half from Jesse Schaffner. Some high-powered offense so far. Defense has really been the name of the game for Rising to date. Right now we see the uh, fans on the field trying to knock off the iconic L.L. Bean boot from, from the bucket. Fans seem to might enjoy this more than the game itself. The game has brought them out there, but they're really here for the half bucket halftime challenge. I got so close on the boot on the bucket a few weeks ago. I'm, I'm still upset that I didn't totally get it off. <laughs> Taking another look at some of the fantastic layouts we've seen so far today. We've talked a little bit about how the weather has impacted the game, but offense has still pulled off some incredible catches despite the conditions. That was a great one from Hecht off a tip disc. Another one from Judd. And a great shooting catch from Gilbert there. Much drier conditions than at least what we started the first half with. Coming into the second half right now, rising leads 11 to 6. We'll be getting this next half underway in just about a minute. As we take a look at the sideline, all smiles for rising right now. And they got to feel pretty confident rolling into this one. Their defense really powering them to the lead they have right now. Up five goals and so far able to respond even when Nightshade was able to go on some brief runs of their own. Although Nightshade doesn't have anything to really be too disappointed about yet. They had a bit of a tough first quarter, but... We're able to keep things pretty even in the second. It was just a 6-5 quarter from Rising and Rising benefiting there from the last possession of the quarter as well. So see if they can continue some momentum into the third quarter. Rising will start this one on defense. They'll be on the right side of your screen pulling down to Nightshade and their away whites on the left. As you take a look at their offensive line heading down towards the goal line. Coach Eli Monica coming down there with them to call out strategy leading into the point. And if you're Monica, what, do you, what are the conversations looking like during this halftime? You know, it's got to be, a, I would assume, a lot about cleaning up some of those simple mistakes. Yeah, I think that's probably a good plan, or the plan that both teams' offenses are going to take into the second half. Um, simultaneously, while both teams are getting a lot of turns on defense with improving conditions, there's going to need to be a little tighter pressure because these turns aren't just going to be given to them by the other team's offense. So I think Nightshade is really going to try and grind on defense there and then maybe also throw something a little something besides person defense um, to show something new to the rising offense. We did one of those points ending the second quarter. A little bit of a junk zone look from rising just to throw something different out there. So far, the handler pressure from uh, Nashville has thrown a little bit of a wrench into the works for the rising offense, but right now it's Nashville starting on O, an opportunity to jump back into things right away. A quick reset towards the middle now, and a turn immediately again from Nightshade, rising an opportunity for a break right away to start the second half. A little scuba over the top to find the middle. It's a fun little lefty scuba reset, even though Yuga is a lefty, so not quite offhand yet. <laughs> And a shot to the handler up to the center. Rising so far able to make good work of the middle part of the field. Plenty of space there. A bit of contact going down. Play continues. Right now rising about seven yards out from their goal. And as all the rising handlers and cutters kind of move towards that sideline and trying to go get the disc, that was a great swing from Knowles to move the disc back to the middle of the field, trying to open up some more cutting space. See if they can do that again here with the disc back trapped. Nashville doing a good job of cutting off everything to the open side right now. That one tipped away. Right now, Nashville getting the opportunity to go back the other way. They got about 70 yards to go. And another hand block from Nightshade's marks. I'm going to need someone to teach me how to do that. And that bleedy shot down the middle falls back into the hands of Rising now. This one floating towards the right sideline, up and just off the fingertips and sailing out of bounds. It just looks like uh, Judd went up a little early and the disc kind of sailed just over the tips of her fingers. All right, Schaffner now getting the offense back underway for Nightshade. Looks to the breakside sideline, finds it. 
and you can see Hankin right in front of the disc trying to take away what Nightshade might be trying to do, which is throw the disc downfield and make them move it laterally. But uh, maybe a pick call is going to send something back. Looks like the defender was not quite close enough. That one taps back in. Some lateral movement here from, and another quick turn from Nightshade, rising an opportunity to pick up and try to score again. A bit of a sloppy first uh, first quarter of the second half here. And the scuba over the top, going off the fingertips and near collision there in the end zone. Xiao might have gotten a little excited after the success of her first scuba. Nashville able to move out of some of that dangerous Callahan territory. Rising so far to start the second half has done a great job not allowing much downfield, especially not up the middle. Yeah, and there hasn't, Nightshade's cutters haven't really been able to gain anything much past four or five yards until that throw there. And another nifty high release flick from Schaffner. Seems to have all the release points here. Schaffner swings it to the center. Castro, Castro with a little bobble coming to catch that disc as well. Schaffner looks deep. That one's hooking back in towards the goal. Will it be there and just out of reach? That was number 42, Rachel Kramer on the deep cut. Goes down to tie the shoe. Looked like it was floating enough, but sailed just deep past Kramer. About one yard too deep, but if you're nightshade, you got to figure conditions are improving now. Some of those were a bit more off mark than the ones that we saw there. So you, if you keep going back to that well, eventually a few are going to come up for you, especially with conditions much better than what we were seeing the first two quarters. And they were also able to switch the field there and push Rising back into their own half of the field, see if they can get another block much closer to the attacking end zone. Great cut from Bacher to lever mark in the backfield there, but unable to connect. Looks like a pick called downfield, a timeout called. Maybe both teams looking to get some fresh legs on. We've said been a long first point of the half so far. Just like in the first half, looks like Rising is calling an early timeout on a break chance to get their offense on the field, especially after a couple turns. Put a little bit more of that offensive firepower back onto the field for Rising. In stadium clocks, got about seven minutes and 52 seconds to go. Yeah, they had moved Knowles and Xiao over for that defensive point, but they were, had been unable to uh, lead Rising to a score there, so they'll bring on the other seven offensive players to convert it here. A fresh new look for Rising right now as they look to jump out to some early offense in this one and extend their lead to what would be their largest lead of the game, the six. Right now they lead 11 to six. It's also a great place to take a timeout here because you can see the disc placed on the middle of the field as opposed to in a trap, trapped position on a sideline where Nightshade might be able to throw a zone look to keep the disc there. So this will uh, give Rising some more space to attack offensively. Coming out in a vertical stack with the stack straight down the field in the middle of the field. I want to... Clear play from Rising, but and well defended. Well defended and a slight miscommunication there. Looking back for that reset, Nightshade an opportunity to punch it home into their own end zone. Just steps out of it now and then finds the streaking cutter for the quick score. And that's a good hold from Nightshade. Um, able to get a bunch of breaks from offensive positions and also... Uh, use up some legs from both Rising's defensive line and offensive line. Number 20, Noel Holmes pulling that one home for Nightshade to start off the scoring here in the second half. All right, get a... Some more looks at this offensive firepower for Rising coming up on this point. Right now they lead by four with about seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah, and this will be a defensive point. We haven't seen Schaffner on many, def on many defensive points, but they're trusting their defensive line without her. And so once they get the turn, we'll see who will be the focal point of uh, their offense. All 
All right, Nightshade back to pull. Going right to left across your screen, and here comes the disc. That was a nice float on it. That's a great pull. Just past midfield, almost to the brick mark. Rising able to get a look up line to start this offensive point. Nice work switching the field there as well with that around flick. Yeah, Pit that call. flood kind of came from an interesting angle with all of Rising's cutters moving over to open up space for Ray, but the disc was already on the side they were flooding to, so it caused some creativity. Nice throw from Huang. And this Nightshade defense certainly putting lots of pressure on these cuts. No easy offense so far to start this second half. And Nightshade's cutting defenders are definitely playing really close to staying close with Rising's cutters to uh, pressure all these catches in the lane. Now on off both hands, the bobble and the turn. Right on Nightshade, an opportunity for a break point here. Looks like Holmes is going to be driving this Nightshade defensive offense. The flick around and fantastic extension to grab it. Is that Mariana Rodriguez or Tori Taylor? I can't quite tell if it's 10 or 18. Number 10, it appears, that's Taylor, who unfortunately is a little shaken up on the play. Hard fall down there onto that turf. Great work keeping the hands on the disc. Awesome catch. Looks like Kramer is being subbed in here. Finished converting the break chance. Tapped in from Kramer. Another offensive opportunity here for Nashville. Portland taking away that reset option, finally able to get there for Nashville. Great reset pressure from Powers. And a shot flick downfield now floating up 50-50 and just rising up over the top is number 19, Brielle LeClaire. It'll continue in the end zone there for Rubino. Wonder if everyone was kind of expecting Devlin to come down with that D and uh, sat back on their heels a little bit. One-on-one -on -one opportunity floating up. LeClaire doing a great job of getting position and coming down with strong with the disc. It's a great catch. Take a look at the replay of that last point there. A couple bobbles from Rising leading to that eventual offense. And again, the fantastic job from number 10, Tori Taylor, holding on to that disc despite the hard landing, eventually subbed out and an immediate shot down field, big sky, and easy opportunity to find the open cutter into the end zone. Yeah, and the huck was a little underthrown, causing the receiver to have to kind of come back to the disc, but they did a great job getting over their defender. Really nice work from LeClaire making that adjustment, reading the disc, and putting themselves in an upper in a position where really they were the only one who could come down with it because of their position and a size advantage. Yep, and here we see Kramer staying out there and Schaffner joining the line for defense. See if they can get another break with uh, even some of their bigger offensive players as well. And the pull now coming from Schaffner. Floats down to just about the brick, the center from Rising. Rising looks like it has a more of a hybrid line of defensive and offensive players on the field as well. Maybe subbing their uh, O-line who had slightly fewer numbers. Spelling them a little bit for legs later. Rising doing a good job switching the field and then finding an opportunity to punch it about 15 yards further towards the end zone. Right now, if you're in Nashville, you have to feel pretty great about how you've come out and to start this second half. You trailed by five at multiple points throughout this game. Right now, you've been able to claw yourself back within three to start off this third quarter. And some slightly unorthodox throws here from Rising to get them into a position right on the goal line. That offhand high release, fantastic. And then finding the cutter, that's number 14, Hannah Baranis there, finding the open space, cutting out of the stack in the end zone for the score. That'll uh, settle Rising's nerves there because that's their first score out of half. 
really hard here without with a lead for Rising not to get complacent, having a few goal lead. There's a lot of game left, and uh, hopefully it's a hard mental switch to continue playing hard through that, even with a five-goal lead. So hopefully that goal will settle them down and enable them to keep pedal to the metal for the rest of the game. And something we talked about throughout this game is the, the interesting structure compared to me with the USAU rules of ultimate that most of these players have spent their entire careers playing. You know, normally if you're if you've got twelve points, you're thinking the end of the game is near imminent. Certainly not over. You still gotta punch it home, but you're you're getting there. We have a quarter and a half of ultimate left to play here. It's when when it's the time and not the score of either working up to thirteen or working up to fifteen, you know, the, the entire dynamic of how you're approaching that end of game really changes. Definitely. And it also speaks to the fitness of these players that they're able to push through. Most games are 20 to 25 points total in USA Ultimate games, and we're already at 20 points with, as you mentioned, 17 minutes of game time left. And no, your eyes are not deceiving you. No need to adjust your screen at all. The sun is shining on the field right now. Sun has risen. There, we'll, there. Get, we'll get something in there. There it is. <laughs> Uh, of course, if you were joining us for the first half, we saw the torrential downpour, but if that's not the most New England weather that we've uh, seen here on the broadcast so far from a, a torrential downpour to a beautiful early summer evening here in Portland, Maine, we really get it all, and it comes quick. Well, to add to that, it looks like it is also sprinkling, so even though the sun's out, it's back raining again. What's the expression for that monkey's uncle as we get a big shot downfield, the big backhand throw streaking to the right, falling just off of the fingertips of Pellegrini not able to quite bring it home, but a fantastic opportunity there for Rising as it almost falls in. Right now, Nightshade gets an opportunity to push it the other way, a little bit of a fast break opportunity as they try to cover some ground quickly. Yeah, they're almost to half field in transition, just a few throws without Rising's defense set. And a flick shot downfield now as a goes up and over right on the goal line. That's number 42, Rachel Kramer making that great grab and then finding the end zone for the score. Keeping this one back within three. Number 32, Lauren Bryant bringing that one home into the end zone. And especially on that point, they're really seeing Nashville taking advantage of uh, Rising's defense not being totally set yet right away after the turn. Yeah, in the wet weather, you could see because catches and traffic are so much harder to make, you could see both teams trying to push cutters downfield and make deep cuts because those catches are, and throws are going to be way harder with a wet disc because the disc is harder to grip. With the conditions drying up a little bit, it looks like they may have to readjust to a more honest defensive positioning because there are some great grabs being made down the field from both teams. And before this game, we did have a conversation with Nashville coach Eli Modica, that being part of their strategy as well, trying to push some of those deep shots downfield, really trusting in their athletes to be able to make those plays and get those defensive stops in the air and downfield. Yeah, and you can see that on the offensive side right now, so we'll see if they can reapply that defensively. Some little bit of rain, a little bit of sunshine. Any any other weather we'd like to throw into this game right now happening all at the same time? Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to jinx it. But, uh, yeah, we're getting it all right now. Certainly interesting conditions to be uh, fighting through this third quarter. And right now about three and a half minutes left to play here in the third quarter of action. This presentation of the Premier Ultimate League. A quick turn, a mistake right away, bobbling off the hands for Rising. And they get it right back, an opportunity to clean up. Yeah, it looks like everyone's a little too excited right now, both on Rising and Nightshade. Um, with this game getting a little tighter, everyone getting a little more frantic, throwing windows a little smaller, everyone just needs to take a deep breath offensively and trust their receivers to make cuts and catches. And a shot towards the end zone, end zone now, a flick, and towing the line, getting it just in there. So that's no Sophie Knowles, an empty five with a great throw from Olivia Hampton. Looks like it was really excellent timing from Knowles to be able to catch that away throw in stride and not have to come back to the disc at all. Yeah, Hampton immediately getting that one out of their hands for the look downfield. No time at all for Nashville to set up any kind of defense as Rising was approaching the end zone. Another defensive line look here for Rising. Coach Ryan Cardinal out there to uh, call a defensive strategy is uh, Boston Sports Classic Sweet Caroline is being celebrated by the Rising sideline. Wouldn't it be a sporting event here in New England without it? Would it 
Yeah. Uh, controversial somewhat, but... Uh, <laughs> well, written by someone from New York. Yeah, who won't perform it. Who will not perform the song. But it wouldn't be a day at Fenway Park without it. Certainly not. We'll see if this extra sunlight actually starts causing any problems for the players on the field. It's yeah. definitely in our eyes right now, but we're a little higher up, so... I wonder as people attack, you can see the shadows, the way the shadows are going as cutters come into that space if it becomes troublesome for them to make catches. It's some very different light than we were playing with earlier. You gotta wonder if it's shining through the rain as well, how much glare that's gotta create down there on the field. Some, some less than ideal conditions right now, but so far we have seen an overall tighter half from both teams compared to what we saw in the first. And this also looks like a, a junkier look from Rising as they're trying to gum up the cutting lanes and playing a little off the handler defenders. Yeah, that center handler looking to poach up the middle a little bit for Rising right now, taking away some of those easier options. Right now that's Chloe Rouse doing just that. It looks almost like a cup, but they are sticking with their person. And that seems to work perfectly. The defense really wanted to make give up easy lateral throws because we had seen so many drops already, so the more throws they had caused... And that immediately turned into some offense for Rising. One shot to the end zone for the score. It's another break from Bitterman. Bitterman there with the score. No one around her either. Plenty of space to bring that one in nice and easy. Yeah, Bitterman's used to playing in much more hotly contested uh, offensive spaces. You can, she has a reputation as an offensive striker and catching a lot of goals on every team she plays for. So it's interesting to see her in a different role on the defensive line, but just as easily able to convert breaks here for Rising. And that, that athleticism definitely coming into play for the defensive line also. Saw that kind of junky zone look for Rising. Definitely uh, throwing a bit of a wrench into the offensive strategy for Nashville there. Yeah, and it wasn't something that they had thrown at all in the first half that I noticed. Maybe for one point or a couple throws, but giving something else for Nashville's handlers to start thinking about, and which might cause even more pressure on catching the disc and progressing through reads. And a quick adjustment also, especially after uh, Nashville was able to come out and get two quick scores, giving them a different look as they continue their way through this half is uh, a good way to respond for Rising right now as they defend their lead. You can see... Uh, Hankin and Fitzgerald over here from on Rising's defensive line over from the offensive line to continue trying to drive that offense on a turn. And as you can see here on your screen right now, you can donate to the Premier Ultimate League at the link on your screen right now. Right now, 14 to 9, Portland Rising's lead. That sails out of bounds on the pull. Give Nightshade a little reprieve from having to take the disc on the sideline and being able to center it instead. And this looks like, uh, as we zoom out, Rising coming out, another junky look trying to take away the middle of the field. See players kind of playing off their matchups. And a big floating flick heading right down towards the sideline, taken home, backhand now towards the end zone. 50-50 in the air. Pellegrini does a great job of snatching it out of the end zone. Moves things forward. Yeah, it's a great job holding position by Pellegrini and able to stand tall against uh, Nashville's bigger attackers. Pick called further back. Quick tie of the shoe as well. Good time to take an equipment check. Wait for the stop disc. All right, as we see some of those members of Portland's offensive line now working with their D-line, let's see how their offensive firepower is able to stack up now that they've gotten the turn. You can see Schaffner standing in the lane waiting to try and cut off any big cuts from downfield. Mucking up a lot of action there in the middle. Seems to be working. Nice break throw around to get that reset. Back towards the middle, and the fantastic D there, number 42, Rachel Kramer, swatting that one down to the turf. Right now, Nashville has an opportunity to pick up right on their own goal line and, and punch it home, bring this one back to just a four-point game. And right up to the top, back to Kramer again, some bookends. Second time we've seen that today. And yeah, Hankin and Fitzgerald are really trying to drive the defensive offense from rising, but we're just not able to connect there on the uh, reset. 
good job by Kramer reading what Hankin wanted to do. Not much time left here in the third quarter. About 23 seconds on the in-stadium uh, in clock here at Fitzpatrick Stadium in Portland, Maine. Another offensive look here for Rising coming down. Right now they lead by four. And a really great job from Nashville being able to capitalize right away on that quick turn. Kramer getting both uh, the stuff and the score there and patiently setting up some of that end zone offense and punches it home to make this a four-point game. Yeah, Schaffner going to a high-release flick there to give a little floatier of a throw. If it's coming out lower, it's going to be a little snappier and harder to catch for a receiver. All right, and, and here's the going pull. Straight out of bounds. Goes out just past center field. Great catch by Coach Fury, though. <laughs> Always at the ready. Yeah, they're ready to put cleats on at any time, given the opportunity. All right, time expiring now in the quarter. That means that Raz will play to either a score or turn here, an opportunity to push their lead back to five. So far, an even match in the quarter that went floating up and a fantastic grab in for the score to end the quarter. Yeah, that's Aaron Ray just making a catch in traffic. Uh, the Nightshade defender looked like they had done a really good job peeling off and uh, covering that deep space, but Aaron was able to gain position there to make a play. And nothing too fancy about that offense for Rising either. Just send the cutter straight to the cone and let him make a play. Yeah, not wasting any time either, even though they had the whole possession. All right, a pretty even match there as we stay with a five-point lead for Portland Rising. Both teams putting some points up there on the board. Right now, Rising will carry one timeout into the second half. Nashville still has both of theirs as we enter the fourth quarter. And we do want to remind you as we enter the fourth quarter as well, this one will end a bit differently from what we just saw. There will be a buzzer-beater opportunity. Now, of course, if there's a tied game, that can be very exciting. That's certainly not out of the question. We've seen Nashville be able to put up some quick points so far. So a five-point lead for Portland, certainly uh, not secure by any means with so much ultimate left to play. No, they at the beginning of that quarter, it looked like Night Nashville was about to go on a nice run. But uh, Rising did a really good job there at the end to bring it back to the five-point cushion that they had at the beginning of the quarter. One of the conversations we had with Nashville coach Monica before this game is all the different regions that Nightshade pulls players from right now. Really all throughout the, the southern United States getting a really wide berth of players to make a very talented roster. Yeah, did he mention five states, six states? I think five, six. Five states, I believe. Five or six. Yeah, and it's been it's a testament to the dedication of the players who are putting in the time and traveling from all over for practice. Uh, Rising has the uh, benefit of just being able to draw mainly from the Boston and Portland area and the New England region being a little more compressed than the Southeast, whereas it requires a lot more travel, uh, long hours maybe on friends' couches or guest rooms uh, compressed for practices. And, compressed and a hot spot for Ultimate for both the, the college scene, the club scene as well, and here in Maine, the, the youth and high school scene being you know so well developed compared to other parts in the country as well certainly something rising has been happy to take advantage of yeah that being said nightshade being able to draw on a smaller group of maybe club teams in the u.s usa ultimate uh, club division might have more experience playing together whereas rising has to pull a bunch of different playing styles and people getting used to it so far it's worked out well for rising this year they have been rolling really leaning on their defense as well to make some Big differences for them, too, as they've rolled to all wins so far. Looking to bring home another win right now as they lead 15 to 10. And trying to make a playoff push. A lot of stiff competition in the East Division. That pull coming in high, sailing just to about the brick. Great pull. As we get the fourth quarter of action underway, an offensive look now for Portland Rising. We see Sophie Knowles isolated again in uh, the vertical space. That one holstered, thought about the deep shot, didn't quite go for it. And Rising has gained 50 yards in three throws. 
just off the hands, but hey, how about that for a cleanup, keeping the play alive? A shot now to the end zone, finds it in a really efficient and quick offensive point there for Rising, not doing anything too flashy, but in cut, in cut, swing and score. Yeah, you really couldn't ask for much more from Rising's offense there. That offensive line, such a cohesive unit. Yeah, that's basically a coach's dream, just executing on all levels. All right, Rising will throw another defensive look out there as they get set to pull. And as we get into this fourth quarter, we have to wonder if uh, Nashville's slightly smaller roster for this game is going to have an effect as their legs start getting a little tired with less rest in between points. Yeah, we talked about this interesting structure for the game, so different from what many of these ultimate players are used to. Normally, as you mentioned, under a USAU structure, just about 25 points is a pretty normal spot to end a longer game in. We're already at 26 points heading into our 27th right now. Yeah, and we have well over 10 minutes to play. And right now with that six-point lead so far, the tied for the longest of the game so far for, for Rising, at what point, if you're Nashville, do you start changing up your offensive strategy to try to get some more quick offense, knowing that you really are on the clock now? I mean, I think Nashville has been looking for those quick strikes the whole time, and so I wonder if that's almost shot them in the foot trying to score a little faster than they otherwise could have. Well, a hand block right away for Rising puts the disc back in their hands and the great layout to keep the offensive break opportunity alive. Well, that's Bitterman again. Bitterman's mark made all over this game. That flick coming off a little wobbly, not quite able to fill the space. It just slipped out of Decker's hands. Schaffner directing traffic there. Let's see what kind of offense Nashville is able to muster right now as they trail by six in this fourth quarter. About ten and a half minutes of ultimate left to play. That one, a nice flick sailing back around to gain some yards and reset the field as well, giving more open field space. And a shot towards the sideline, the layout bid, and the score. How about that? Is that Kramer again? Schaffner to Kramer again. Schaffner to Kramer, the dynamic duo that's been all over the field tonight for Nashville. Kramer going fully horizontal to pull that one down. Yeah, Nightshade, Rising done a really good job to push most of uh, Nashville's cutters downfield where they were able to lock down and kind of clog up space, but it's a great throw to switch the field to Schaffner and open something up there for Kramer to make a great layout grab. Right now, lead cut to five, 16 to 11, Rising's advantage here at Fitzpatrick Stadium in Portland, Maine. Another offensive line opportunity here for Rising as they had a fantastic start to the fourth quarter just two points ago. Really efficient offense. We'll see what they're able to replicate from that now. Yeah, at this point in the game with a five-point cushion, it's kind of on Rising's offense just to keep scoring and keep maintaining possession. Uh, don't need to do anything fancy. Just keep doing what they're doing. The last three or four offensive points have been really smooth for them, leading from the end of the third quarter into now. Overall, both teams have done a better job protecting the disc with those uh, improving weather conditions that we've seen so far here throughout the second half, especially compared to the first. Also, maybe some of those early game jitters dying down after halftime. Centered here for Rising as they approach center field. Yeah, besides the lane clog uh, from Nightshade putting someone in the lane to cut away, take away defenders, we haven't really seen anything besides honest person defense. And another shot there down towards the end zone and a goal for Rising. Another very efficient offensive point here to move towards closing out that game. Yeah, that's Xiao again. Not throwing the huck this time, but catching it from Ray. We're switching roles here. Breaking out of that handler spot, moving down downfield for a little bit of extra offensive firepower. But yeah, that was just smooth uh, open side offense from Rising, not having to do anything or really uh, get into too much trouble. Easy progressions from the throwers, not having to make any decisions. So many different looks for defense for this rising team. A lot of different options, a lot of really 
tall, fast, and dynamic defenders they can throw out there to give some, some pretty different looks. So at the end of last quarter, we saw a few of those different junky zone looks as well that seemed to fluster Nightshade. Wonder how much of that we're going to see here in the final frame. Yeah, we've seen a bunch of different personnel groupings together on Rising's defense, even bringing over some offensive players to add some more punch after a turn. But it looks like this is a more traditional defensive line from Rising, so we'll see if they're able to get another break opportunity. Rising is now twice this game also on some of those quicker turns, taking an opportunity to put their some offensive firepower onto the field with their D-line using those substitutions. Right on the sideline now is Nashville. They look to work it back to the middle, open up a bit more space downfield. The layout just missing from Rising. Right now, scrambling a bit is Nashville as that one falls just overhead. But the cleanup, number 16 there, Emily Branson, there to clean up the mistake, keep this point alive. Now just a few yards out from the end zone. Oh, good catch in traffic from Schaffner. And a great look there from Schaffner as well, continuing to swing the field. Finding number 24, Grace Castro, in the end zone. Yeah, that was a great bid earlier on in the point from Munson trying to poach off and onto a player on a swing, but it looks like the player that she was guarding otherwise was able to sneak free towards the end of the point there because Munson was trying to recover for the rest of it. Brief scramble getting up from that layout, get leading some uh, offensive opportunity there for Nashville. Yeah, and I guess given the uh, cushion that Rising has, that's a risk that the Rising coaches are giving to their players to take. So far, two very efficient offensive points here for Rising on this offensive line. We'll see how they look to attack this defense coming down from Nashville. All right, here comes the pull from Nightshade. It's up. Sailing towards the far sideline and out of bounds. Wasn't quite, didn't quite have the height to catch its edge and come back inbounds. Looks like Nightshade is throwing another player into the lane to cut off one of those easy throws, but there's a flood play. Well uh, sniffed out by Rising's offense. Well, those two very efficient offensive points really coming from taking advantage of some of those easy ins that we've seen so far, an adjustment from Nightshade to try to take those easy ones away. Nightshade's early success on the mark, maybe making Knowles uh, think twice there on that huck look. Or not. Looking to the end zone, this one falling back in, towing the line and bringing it home. The presence of mind to keep the toes on the line and score is number 33, Yuga Zhao. And that's their uh, second deep throw goal caught in a row from a different thrower this time. And how about the throw there from number 55, Sophie Knowles as well, getting the one to hook just back in bounds did what the pull couldn't and just gave it the right edge to float right back in, but also a great play from Zhao to toe the line there in case it didn't come back. Real trust in teammates there too, putting it up in a space where only your teammate can get to it. A difficult play to be made, but knowing that it's going to be brought home. They play together on uh, Brute Squad out of Boston in the club series, so probably have gotten some good reps together there. A lot, lot of reps between the club scene and the pro scene for those two players. About 8 minutes, 20 seconds left to play here in the final quarter of action in this matchup between Portland Rising and Nashville Nightshade, the presentation of the Premier Ultimate League. Alex Odie firing up the D-line right now for Rising. Yeah, and Rising has to be feeling pretty good as the clock keeps ticking down and they keep maintaining their six-goal lead. You know, Nashville's done a good job of, of responding to Portland as they as they push their leads ahead, but just on the other end, Portland's been able to keep that five to six point lead maintained for most of this game. Since the first quarter, the closest that Nashville's been able to claw back in is three, and then we saw two great back to back points from rising to be able to claw back into it. So the something to hang your hat on if you're rising is not letting some of that swinging momentum with the game throw you off as we see another point there from Nashville pulling that one home that's number 16 Emily Branson on the catch for the score and that was great patient offense from 
Nashville. They uh, rising downfield slightly off screen, came out in more of a poachy look trying to take away the open side looks, but Nashville did a good job swinging it all the way around where they were able to get an open look on the break side, but a pretty easy throw unmarked. So far for most of the fourth quarter here, these teams trading goals, which if you're rising, you're pretty comfortable living with. As long as your offense is still continuing to get it done and keep the lead what it is, you're happy to ride out this game to the end of the clock. Yeah, again, with uh, the game be being played to time as opposed to a point total, that's a totally reasonable strategy to take because as the goal count keeps getting higher, as long as they're able to maintain their cushion, it'll be fine one or two points here won't make as much of a difference as it will if it's being played to an end point. Just under eight minutes left to play here in the final quarter of action. Right now, Nashville back to pull. This one coming from the far pylon, going more towards the center of the field than the last we've seen. Sliding to the brick. Good cut from Fitzgerald there. Uh from slightly behind the disc to kind of get in a power position and get the offense started. And a pick called there, a couple of more inside offense opportunities there for Rising. Two quick in cuts to push them past center field. And you can see Nashville just staying in person matchup defense. Um, a little surprised to not see them having tried anything that different, but maybe with the comp conditions there, concern that Rising will be able to play easier, even easier offense than they have currently. This one floats up and the big grab over the top to push the Rising lead 19 to 13. It's a great cut from Huang and a great throw to space again from Knowles. Huang elevating up to bring that one back home and continue the efficient offense for Rising. Just under seven minutes to play now here in the fourth as we get another defensive look from Portland Rising. All smiles there coming onto the field for Portland Rising as they sit on this six-point lead. Yeah, the offensive line is getting their job done, and now see if uh, Rising's defense is able to get another break to even continue increasing the lead while the pressure continues to be put onto uh, Nashville's offensive line to keep scoring and getting their defense on to see if they can cut into the lead. Interesting chess match here. And if you're rising, you can't you can't lose focus. It doesn't take long to punch home six goals with the kind of firepower that that Nashville has. So it really is. It's it's equally on your offense and defense to make sure that you're not letting the foot off the gas, even with a relatively comfortable lead here at this point of the game. Yeah, we'll see if, uh, as we kind of talked about at halftime with the conditions improving, if Rising's cutter defenders are start pushing their matchups under as to stop uh, Nashville with those deep looks take away any of those opportunities for quicker offense, or at least make Nashville work a lot harder for them. And you can see Rising's cutter defenders are playing on the back hip of Nashville's cutters as opposed to under. And a blade around for the reset finds home. Nashville working up the sideline, a bobble but held on to, keeping the play alive. Right now, Rouse on the mark, forces up the sideline. It's a great catch that might not have happened in the first half. Nightshade nah. looking to create a little bit more space to work with right now. Rising doing a good job of taking away a lot up the middle. Ooh, that and we have a player down off of a hard cut. It's number 14, Hannah Baranis. Observer and teammates coming in now to talk. Hoping they're all right. You never want to see someone go down without any contact. Verona's not being helped off the field by teammates gingerly to get up. Go get checked out on the sideline now. And rising medical staff quickly on the field. A standing ovation from the crowd here at Fitzpatrick Stadium. Veronis making a mark on this game on offense and defense so far. Never good to see any player taken off the field. You know, having had a 
few lower body injuries before hopefully Varanus is okay and able to keep going. But that did not look particularly good. All right, a sub coming on for Rising to take Baranus's place. Right now, Nashville will have the disc once it's tapped back in, an opportunity to close this back to a five-point game. Grace Robinson will have the disc to tap it back in. And a nice little cheeky look there right to the middle. Number 42, Rachel Kramer bringing it home from Schaffner, the handler. That one-two punch has been really difficult to contain for Rising so far. Yeah, they've combined on quite a few goals, and especially after seeing an injury and having a stoppage like that, it's definitely hard to come back from. So good job to take a breath and execute from Nashville's offense. This so far has been maybe the most back and forth that we've seen this game so far, rather than one team going on a run, then another team's trading goals now for most of the... Uh, the, fir the fourth quarter that we've seen. Definitely a more offensively focused quarter. Uh, maybe as defensive legs keep getting tired, more and more tired. Uh, offensive execution has stayed high and really able. We haven't even seen many break opportunities, let alone any breaks. Mostly been in this end zone to the, our right. Both teams clean, clean it up on some of those mistakes, taking more advantages of the easy under opportunities as well that have been provided with the uh, various defensive strategies. We'll see how this uh, rising offense is able to come back out. So far, they've been dominant here in the fourth quarter. Definitely makes things easier from the coaching staff not to have to make any uh, strategic changes on offense. That pulls centered after sailing and skidding towards the sideline. And we do see some sagging from Nashville here, switching it up putting some players in the lane to try and take away the easy cuts that Rising's cutters have been getting. And Rising taking a shot downfield now. Pulled home and a shot at the end zone wide open. Aaron Ray. Aaron Ray, number 16, streaking to the end zone. Plenty of space to pull it home. More efficient offense and you got to feel really confident with how your offense has been rolling all game long for Portland Rising. Certainly. It looks like uh, whoever was last back for Nashville's defense kind of got lost there and didn't really recognize that where the disc was headed to. Olivia, which... Olivia Hampton putting that one up, recognizing the open space. Yeah, despite some early jitters in that possession, it was they were able to, uh, Rising's offense was able to take a deep breath and find the open spaces. And it looks like there may be a timeout called on the field now as Rising huddles up. It looks like Rising is just looking to have everyone take a deep breath, as especially seeing a teammate go down, keep everyone focused and uh, dialed in for the rest of this game. And let's take a look at some of the highlight plays we've seen here from today. Some spectacular layouts, including a few from Schaffner, really making a mark all over this game with some fantastic athleticism on the ground and in the air as well. We were talking a little bit at halftime about the impact that Schaffner's had at virtually every level of their career so far and certainly seeing it all on display tonight. Yeah, their play has really been uh, setting the tone for Nashville and able to help them even having a chance to crawl back into this game. But some great plays everywhere on the field for both Nashville and Portland. Not a soft turf here at Fitzpatrick Stadium, so really incredible seeing the athletes make those layouts and bouncing right back up. Yeah, being able to, having played on this turf a few times, definitely don't envy uh, these players laying out on this. Ooh, that center pass off the pole falling just 
a little further out of reach than I think anyone was expecting, but Schaffner able to bring it back home. That one coming in a little bit blady. You know, Castro's made a few catches like that throughout this game, kind of shoestring on a little bit of a floppier throw. Looks like there's a pick called further back into the action. Besides a few picks and maybe a foul or some confusion over timeouts, it's been a pretty clean game overall, though. Not a lot of foul calls, not a lot of contests. Been pretty clean, and players seem to have uh, stayed there as a great block from Decker, yeah, getting a hand De block back. Getting a big hand block from Decker, and then the huge layout to keep that play alive. What the full extension. How about that? Yeah, and that was a n yet another hand block from Nashville trying to get it right back after one from Rising. But. Josie Gillette doing a great job tracking that one down and going fully horizontal to keep that one alive. Normally we'll see Josie making great plays with her throws, but that one was a fantastic catch. And it's Alex Odie for the score. Yeah, also from Gillette doing something she's more known for, which is getting the disc into the, into the end zone. It's what we'll call bookend adjacent, not throw, yeah. getting the D and then throwing the score. Sure. Bookend assist. Yes. Still on the stat sheet. <laughs> yeah, great job by Robinson there to get her hand in, but an even better play by Gillette, who was not the intended receiver to catch up to that disc. Not giving up on the play, the hustle the whole way, then finding the open Alex Odie streaking towards the cone. Just under four minutes left to play here in the fourth quarter of action. This presentation of the Premier Ultimate League. Right now it is Portland Rising leading 21 to 14. Largest lead of the night right now for Rising. And remember, you can make a donation to the Premier Ultimate League. Go to premierultimateleague.com slash donate. And that was the first break of the half or the quarter from either team. So we'll see if Rising can keep riding that opportunity and looks like they'll have another chance here. Odie coming up with a quick hand block right there. Opportunity to turn more defense into more offense. So far, that's in the name of the game pretty much all evening long for this Rising team. Yeah, the Nashville Cutter thought they had an easy catch and Odie was just able to run, continue running through. That one's, thrown, slowed down. that one's thrown into a little bit of traffic. It'll be going back the other way for Nashville. See if they can take advantage of this second chance. And a flick huck heading down. Chloe Rouse doing a great job getting a hand on it towards the sideline, batting it away. Another break opportunity. It looked like that throw was going to get there, but Chloe was able to use her speed to really catch up to it and make the block. Good read and by Decker there. Nice patience from Decker, not going up to challenge, instead of letting it fall right down. There is a pick on the play that'll go back into Decker's hands. And the nice grab there from Shen to keep it alive. Yeah, this going is, up for it, some contact there as well. This is some of the best matchup defense we've seen from Nightshade yet, really pressuring Rising's handlers, and staying close and turning into a turnover. Shannon Decker trying to get some work done up front, but turns into the miscommunication. Nashville pumps a few times thinking about going deep, but holsters it, now finds the in cut, keeps it alive, keeps it up from the turf. A good catch on a throw a little behind her. And the hammer over the top, floating up and just out of reach. Nashville's handler's patience might have just ran out a little bit there, trying to score a little too quickly with time running out. Got a minute 53 left on the in-stadium clock here at Fitzpatrick Stadium. And this quarter will end on the buzzer and end the game. And also in the fourth quarter, the uh, clock stops on these turns as well, unlike the rest of the game. 
around to Odie now. Yeah, even though another piece from Shen's defender, Kramer. Yeah, the, the, despite having uh, less personnel on the roster tonight, we've seen just nonstop intensity from this Nashville team. There's certainly no quit. Definitely not. Especially on that defensive end, we've been talking all night about how their hand blocks have been making an impact. They've been changing up some of those in cuts as well as Chloe Rouse makes a great catch, towing the line to keep it alive just a few yards in front of the end zone. Little cheeky flip up over the top for the score. Yeah, not making it easier on their receivers. Rising is, but the everyone downfield is making great plays. Something about that far right side pylon is just everybody's wanting to tow that line today. A lot of a lot of throws getting put into that space and Rising doing a great job staying patient and pulling them home. Another, especially with no physical line there to visualize, it's a great job from the Rising. That's a really hard play to make without being able to see anything. You kind of just have to put your toes down and hope that you stayed in bounds throughout the catch. And then a quick little just shot over the top to find the open person in the end zone. And a nice little spike there. A little bit of sauce at the end of the play. Colette putting a punctuation mark on that offensive possession and after finishing a longer point. About a minute 14 left to play here in the game as we get another defensive look from Rising. We'll see if Nashville is able to take more shots at the goal to pull this one a bit closer. Right now it's an eight point game, 22 to 14 Rising ahead. It'll be interesting to see if Rising goes back into more of a junk set that causes Nashville to throw more passes and thus take more time off the clock or if they'll stay in more of a person matchup defense. Finding like it's a person defense. Finding some space up the middle with that person defense as well. Right now, no one really hanging out in the lane for Rising, trying to muck up any of those in throws as we're under a minute left to play here in the final quarter. Yeah, and you can see Rising's cutter defender still staying on that back hip, not wanting to get up any easy throws and away hucks from Nashville. And after some nice work capitalizing on those in cuts, there's the turn from Nashville as clock kick counts down just about 30 seconds left to play here in the final quarter of action. Let's see if Rising's able to maintain possession until the final horn. Some looks here to the middle. And for Rising, lots of great things to hang your hat on from this game, especially the efficiency of the offense here in the second half and the tenacity of the defense forcing a lot of errors in the first, taking advantage of those as well. One final shot towards the end zone to get on the board one more time is Rising pushing the lead to nine. And that's another one of those big hucks that Gillette is known for get Lisa Liu on the board. And with just about 6.8 seconds left in the game, this next poll should bring things to a close here in Portland, Maine. See if Nashville can get one final point off the last few seconds. You got to think they're going to want to take one last shot towards the end zone if they can have the time on the clock. Rising, hopefully Rising gets their hands team out there. Stop everything at the goal line. And I can hear the excited rising fans here in attendance at Port in Portland, Maine at Fitzpatrick Stadium. Yeah, it's been a great crowd all season. Uh, it's great to see people out supporting their local team and people driving up from Boston to come support their teammates, friends, just rising overall. And it's great to for rising to deliver another win at home. Seen some awesome collaboration between rising and glory, the AUDL team out of Boston as well. Yeah, good to see a lot of the players out there volunteering and helping out where they can. And with that pull on the way and landing, 6.8 seconds left once it is picked up to take one final shot at the goal. Looks like that pull was just short enough that Nashville's going to be able to take a shot to the end zone. Coming up just in front of center field, perhaps, going back towards the middle as well because it sailed out of bounds. Right now, some free safeties back for Rising is to try to prevent some of those shots downfield. The flick 
floating up. Lots of players in the area. And Chloe Rouse able to knock it away to end the game. That was a great throw to get it off and a good space to give Nashville's receivers a chance. But uh, Rouse did an excellent job holding position and able to get a block to finish the game. And with Portland Rising in the playoff hunt right now in their division, this has got to be a pretty statement win moving forward, too, as, as they look to continue their season and what's just been a dominant run for them so far through a few games. Yeah, there's a big two-game road trip coming up next weekend, so hopefully they can keep this momentum to games against New York and D.C. in the interdivision matchups. And if you're making any adjustments after this game, areas of improvement maybe for Portland that you see, what's, what's on the top of your list there? I think continuing to do what they did, this game was pretty well played overall. Definitely some early drops and maybe some miscommunications, but uh, I think, especially in the second half, if Ryzen can play like that against every team, they're going to do great. All Maybe right. a little more defensive pressure. And as players shake hands and call it a great game, which it was between Nashville and Portland, taking a look at some of the fantastic highlights we've seen here from Fitzpatrick Stadium tonight. Big skies, big layouts, and a big win for Portland Rising. Thank you very much for joining us tonight on the call. I have been Ross Ketchke. We'll see you next time.